Good morning everybody and welcome to the video. In this video, we are essentially gonna uh, capture the change changes in the database table. We're gonna capture all those records and essentially publish them into Kafka. For this, we're gonna leverage Debesium connector, which is gonna basically bring all the changes on a particular table into a Kafka topic. From there, we will have a consumer which is gonna consume those messages. Right? And we'll use a schema registry to register the schema. Uh, let me show you what we are about to build in this uh, project. And again, it is super exciting, as I said. We have our database where insert, update, deletes are happening. And we have a division connector, which is going to connect and essentially bring insert updates uh, into a Kafka topic. We are going to use a schema registry to register the schema and a Python consumer is going to consume the data. After that, the Python consumer can again dump all the raw data into S3. From there, we can run a bad job, a glue bad job, which is scheduled maybe on an interval of one hour, five hours, six hours. And basically this process, the raw files, and essentially will dump into a, a, a transactional data lake and perform an absurd operation. So that is exactly what we are about to build in this project. It is very, very, very exciting. Again, an entire step-by-step -step guide is given here, right? Docker compose up, everything is given, right? So, so let's 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 do this project with you, okay? So I'm gonna do this project with you. So the first step is basically we gotta spin up the entire stack. All right, part one. If you go to the uh, my GitHub repository, we have to spin up the entire stack. Uh, which I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna say Docker Compose up, uh, Docker Compose up, hyphen, hyphen build. So this should essentially spin up my entire stack. This will spin up a uh, DBCM schema registry, Kafka, Zookeeper, and a Postgres database. Once this is ready, I'm gonna resume. All right, my entire stack is up and running, and the next step is basically to open PG admin, and basically we'll be connecting to that database. So the way you can do that is pretty straightforward. Here you can say add server, give it a, any name. And then basically in the connection section, you will say localhost, right? And then the username is Postgres, the password is Postgres, and then click on the save. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again. So here you can see it's my Postgres. Head over to the database called Postgres in the public schema in the table section. We are going to create our first table over here. Right click and click on query tool. This should open up the window. And here what we need to do is basically first we need to create a table called sales. So I'm going to copy the snippets from the GitHub section. And here you can see the table has been created. I can refresh and I should see my sales table there. Great. Now we need to essentially give um, um, a replica identity. We need to set that to full. So I'm gonna set that. Great, that's done, right? So basically we have a sales table and now we do not have any data inside that. Now the next step that we need to do is we need to uh, put a call command. So basically we're gonna register a Debesium connector. Observe here carefully, uh, the name is sales connector. Here we are essentially giving um, the username, the password, and the database name. And here I'm saying I wanna listen on a table called sales, public.sales, right? So I'm gonna do this with you. Uh, I'm gonna open up Postman, and here you can see I have the call copied. And I'm gonna make a post request, okay? It's a post request. And now here you can see I get a 201, which means everything was okay. I can do a get request, everything okay. And if I go, and hit this one, I should get my connector. So everything worked great, my connector is now ready. At this point, what we have done is basically spin up the entire stack, which is Kafka, Zookeeper, Debesium, Postgres. And the next thing that we did is basically we created a table called sales, and then we essentially created our division connector. Everything is given step by step here, so you should be able to follow up pretty easily. The next step is now pretty straightforward. We are gonna uh, start inserting some data, and then we're gonna consume the data from the Kafka topic. So now what we need to do is in the project directory, you will have a file called Python uh, producer Postgres. In the env, make sure uh, your host is localhost, your port and the username, password, everything is Postgres. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert some data, right? I do not have any data right now. So I'm gonna just quickly show you. So that everything from, uh, we'll do public.sales and here you can see everything is empty. I will start this code. This will insert messages at an interval of six seconds into my uh, uh, Postgres database. Uh, please observe on the right hand side uh, here. You can see we have inserted a record here and hopefully we can see here Here we can see the record has started coming at, uh, at this point what we have done is basically we have inserted just two records and now what would happen is the schema registry will Essentially, you know identify the schema. I'll essentially show you that point 
Now there is a Python file uh, here called Python consumer. Come here and now you want to run the function called fetch schema. Again, I have already uh, put the schema here, but I just want to show you. So when we inserted the first sample, right, if you observe carefully on my screen on the left hand side window, we essentially have a schema. So to show you uh, a little bit here, uh, again, real quickly. Real, real, real. Again, this is basically the schema of my data, right? I have essential invoice ID, item ID, etc, etc. So that's the schema. Now what we need to do is basically, uh, since we have that, right? if you don't see that in the code, uh, I actually I do have it here. So I have the entire schema here. Again, it's a big schema. So I'm just going to collapse that. Okay, so I have the schema over here. Now the next part is pretty straightforward. We can basically start consuming messages. So there's a Python file called Python producer Postgres and Python consumer, uh, right? So I'm gonna start them up quickly. So I will start uh, the producer here, which is again inserting messages into Postgres. Debezium is gonna capture that and we're gonna basically bring uh, that in the consumer side. So now on the uh, this file, we wanna run the function called main. And basically we're gonna run that. And now as soon as basically the messages are inserted, as you can see, we are capturing that near real time. At this point, you can insert into S3, uh, publish to an event bridge, do whatever you want, right? Uh, th this essentially opens up uh, a lot of possibilities. As you can see, real time, we are inserting into Postgres and we are getting the data on the console, right? So this is a great project, right? Uh, one small thing I will tell you, I am actually stuck on a small part that is in PySpark. So I'm able to consume the messages from a Kafka topic using PySpark. Uh, the only part where I'm stuck is essentially deserializing Avro. Um, deserializing the messages, uh, I did provide the Avro schema. I'll leave the Stack Overflow post in case if you wanna, if you are curious to you know see that. So again, at this point, this is the entire project. Again, pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Uh, I have made it easy so that anybody can follow, but again, it's a pretty complex one, right? You have your changes happening in the database, you're capturing that using Debezium, you have a schema registry where the schema is registered, your consumer are gonna use that schema, and your and then again, your consumers can be Python, can be a Lambda function, uh, could be a glue, uh, could be essentially a Spark streaming job, right? And here is the, um, again, the issue that I was talking about, I am not able to serialize in Spark, but you can take a look at it if in case if you want to. Again, this architecture is very widely adopted and I wanted to try this because I saw this on the slides of Data AI in summer 2022. Uh, this is how Robinhood basically brought data from their um, systems. So here you can see on slide number nine, here you can see there, here there are source database, they are capturing that using Debezium, publishing that into Kafka, then they have a Delta streamer. That's the part where I'm stuck a little bit on deserialize it. Uh, since uh, I'm using Kafka Confluence, I'm not able to deserialize that properly. But again, um, you know, Delta streamer and then you can perform an upsert into the data like etc, etc. So very widely adopted and here is the table, uh, here is the comparison why, um, you know, Robinhood opted for Divisium instead of DMS. Uh, they knew that the engineering uh, time cost would be more in Divisium because there's a learning curve, while DMS it is straightforward, you just have to select certain options. Um, again, uh, uh, Debezium is sort of an open source, so you can tweak stuff, you can tweak the source code, etc, etc. Hence, I believe uh, Robinhood opted for Debezium. I hope this video was useful and I hope you learned some essential skills here about uh, Kafka, Python, Debezium, Postgres, right? Everything is given on the GitHub section uh, step by step. So if you come to the GitHub section, you should be able to follow. So first step, spin up the container. Second step, log in into the Postgres, create a table. Step three, create a Debezium connector, verify that. Uh, step four, run the producer code, run the consumer code, and then ba basically happy learning. Uh, with that being said, if you have any more questions, let me know your question in the comment section. I'll be very, very happy to assist you. Once again, keep smiling, keep programming, keep learning, and do try these labs out, okay? And I'll see you guys in the upcoming next video.